Hey guys, welcome to the Dead Horse Podcast. We're back after a long break. I'm Vivek. With me are Arvin. Hello. And Tejas. Hello. So yeah, this is our back after the break podcast. Uh, Arvin, nothing big happened in the last couple of weeks when we didn't cast. Uh, how's it going, man? What were you doing in your uh, long vacation? <laughs> yeah, well, I was just like literally like sending emails. Didn't even like develop anything except really basic fixes. Just like it was one long sequence of like staring at the Gmail window over and over. <laughs> and, and, and refreshing and waiting for like a new update to come. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like on okay. one side there was the Google thing. You know, like you can set it up so it displays you results in the last hour. And okay. on the second side, it was like just. Seeing all emails and stuff. Uh, sounds like a very very relaxed two weeks that you've had. Um, <laughs> just staring at a staring at a computer screen, waiting for emails to come in. Man, I mean, a lot of people would kill to have that job. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I would kill people after that job. But yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you would. But I mean, to be fair, you would kill people almost after any job that you did, just because. Yeah, let's not bring my like past into this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tejas, what's up, man? Uh, not that much. Just been a busy few weeks. Uh, that decide I've actually been a little out of it, so I'm kind of out of touch with a lot of things. You guys may have to bring me up to speed. Um, I did watch Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, cool. And that was so, awesome. So, like, speaking of. Uh, speaking of shit that released recently that all of us really, really liked, uh, we should talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, we should. Why not? Yeah, we should talk about that. I, I mean, I know Arvin's got a game out. We'll get to that eventually. This is... Like, he's been plugging his game on this podcast forever. We, we will we will talk uh-huh. about Unrest. Uh, uh-huh. So, what did you guys think of Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, I loved it. I... Was, and as I was saying a little bit earlier, there were points in it that didn't that just felt a little bit too forced. Uh, I couldn't think of any examples though, so you know, crap. Okay. Yeah. But I uh, love the. It, uh, I think what Tejas uh, you were saying was that about that. Like for, for example, like I laughed a lot at the the uh, the raccoons line where he was like, "Look at all of us, a bunch of jackasses standing <laughs> in a <his> yeah." <laughs> See, that was and awesome. He, yeah. yeah. That, that guy was, was such clearly a like, line. yeah, he was clearly lampshading the trope, you know, like in every, yeah, yeah, yeah. like in Avengers, like it was like them standing in a circle and camera panning around. They, yeah. they were clearly lampshading the like so epic team up thing, which always yeah. happens. Well, yeah, they're, they're yeah, lampshading they did that well. like everything ever where people stand up to say like, I'm in and you have yeah, my yeah. <laughs> and my sword and like, yeah, that, right? uh, they were, they were poking a lot of awesome fun at that. You know, do yeah. really well. I, mean, that, I was you know, every time that they take a cliche and then make fun of it, that was yeah. really well done. Even you know the little yeah. idle banter between people was fun. But there were moments where they actually needed a like slightly seriouser di- dialogue, and there it kind of felt like, at least to me, it just started to feel a little bit forced or a little bit flat. Um, yeah. or, I don't know, like, I like, I like the part where the raccoon's like, do you think I wanted to be torn apart and put back oh, together? No, see, yeah, see, that was a decent moment, you know, but there were others that, and I'm just like, uh, you know. And, and, and the friendship is magic moment. Let's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, that was. That was that the was best. Yeah. That was, yeah. But I think uh, another moment. thing that may have uh, killed it for me is that I did miss, like, the first 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, we got to the theater late yesterday. So maybe that might oh my have. Oh God! Yeah, you you, you wow. Missed... Yeah. Yeah, you missed all the you missed all the table setting. Uh, yeah. Did, yeah you, that... did you miss the part where like the guy was entering the ruins, or did you catch? Yeah, that? yeah I see. Like, I'll, 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 what happened is is uh, I entered the theater uh, just as they w- uh, got caught by Nova Corps, and oh then they. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh so... my God! Yeah, you missed the awesome like framing sequence like at the yeah. start. Yeah. You missed a lot of table setting, basically, like all the setups for the characters and stuff. You missed a lot of that. 
Yeah, yeah, I figured, and maybe that's why I, you know, I feel a little bit yeah. differently, uh, because you know, I came in a little bit after all of that was set up, but oh. I still enjoyed the movie. Oh, it's such a good movie. Yeah, uh, uh, I feel like I mean, it's actually like the best space opera since like the original Star Wars, like. Uh, that is, like that was that like not is. that much humorous, but like I don't know. Like I mean, at uh, least movies. Like I've actually like thought like the the t- like a lot of TV shows did space opera better, like St- Star Trek and so on. But like there wasn't really any movie which I like thought like and because and I had only watched like the original Star Wars like two or three years back, so not like I have a lot of experience. But I think this was fun. Like they knew that they weren't making some sort of like epic treatise on human condition or whatever. But they no. sort of so they like it was one of those movies which like forced uh, like tried to make us laugh often and also had like the action and and like obviously and the, heart. It had it had real heart. Uh, it is yeah, about... I guess yeah. That's a very like cliche way to put it. But yeah, it's sort of yeah. It 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 succeeded in charming us, I guess. And yeah, obviously, I, mean... I think. uh partly it also helped because like i am more like predisposed to like you know comic book movies because okay that's just like how i am yeah M- marvel has done a good job with comic book movies there is no doubt about that uh, i think dc does a better job with the animated stuff and with the tv shows uh, but that's because i like arrow a lot oh, oh okay <laughs> speaking of animated stuff did you see dc's new animated movie um, uh assault come Assault, assault on Arkham. It, yeah, it's tied into the uh, into the video game series and is supposed to take place just before. Um, the last I think, one. Yeah, Arkham Origins. Yeah, just before yeah. Arkham Origins, and it's pretty damn good. I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, like in terms of animated animated stuff, DC kills Marvel. They put out these annual uh, like they put out these annual Justice League team ups. They put out these annual the Green Lantern movies and. flash movies yeah. which just demolish yeah. anything marvel's doing in terms of animation marvel uh, does animation like i did not know that yeah, yeah. there's an that. avengers assemble tv show there's an incredible hulk tv show there's a she hulk tv show none of them are as good as what dc puts out though. uh hmm. like like you want you want to watch a really really good case for a justice league movie uh, like download and watch this movie called the new frontier it is like if they made a justice league movie that is my like they should just make that live action it would be amazing which one uh, the the new frontier uh, oh yeah it's really really good uh it's got this really retro feel to it it's it's set in the 50s and uh, the way it brings together the justice league is amazing uh this is animated is vi- right yeah yeah it's animated it's vintage dc and it's like done really well and they get the spirit of dc stuff when they when they do that it's really good um but- But no, oh, but yeah, like coming back to like Guardians of Guardians the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Because, like, I have no idea like what the animated stuff like. So. Yeah, yeah, no, Gu- Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I think yeah, you're right. It's probably since Star Wars is one of the best science fiction movies I've ever seen, and yeah, like I know it's cliche to say it, but uh, they sold me like they sold me on this film because the core theme around it was friendship. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I did not know. Uh, like that, like from the trailers, like oh, big! I was just excited because, like, I was like, "Wow, this movie is getting made," actually, instead of like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like I think that was a common thing with a lot of people, and but yeah, the, when I when I was walking in, I did not expect the sort of lightheartedness that like and just like they like this was a movie that like clearly the actors were having fun, and like yeah. the director was having fun and. and it was just like everyone was just like focused on just uh having a good time yeah basically so it was like a perfect summer movie i guess in that way yeah yeah i, I mean like i i am really happy that uh, you know i think the reason that it worked is because like you said they don't try to make some grand statement about the human condition like at the end of the day it's a story about five people becoming friends and that is much much more relatable than some grand statement about the human condition that doesn't really work for a film like this according to me uh i mean yeah the only like problems i had were like how the the two villains were handled like one was obviously ronan the accuser and the other one was like thanos but like he i didn't like how thanos, thanos was handled thanos wasn't really a villain man i mean thanos is being set up like you said uh, 
uh, you said to me for Avengers 3 where he assembles all five infinity gems and makes the infinity yeah. gauntlet yeah right now uh, i don't even know like how he's going to do that right? like yeah huh? he's more i mean right now i don't right even right know now. how they will because like i was 100% convinced like as soon as i saw thanos and like how ronan was talking i was like yeah this film will end with him with that infinity zone uh infinity no like i mean i just thing. realized that there are at the moment uh, four infinity gems have been introduced you know yeah uh, there's there only the two left uh, loki staff you were right loki staff is an infinity gem huh it may be i think uh, the loki no, staff no no it is it's confirmed it's, it's confirmed, confirmed. Yeah, yeah, Loki stuff is an Infinity Gem. That's the reason they have it at the end of uh, the Captain America movie. Yeah, I, I don't know, like it's because like it's, but then it's also said that like that derives its power from the Tesseract, so that might just be like one gem. Yeah, know that's that what works. I thought. I thought yeah. it was, uh, you know, derived yeah. from the Tesseract, so it was like a fraction yeah, of that's, the. That's that's the the main like thing in the Avengers, right? That's why like Black Widow is able to use that on the MacGuffin thing. Mm. like stop mm. but yeah i don't know how that works like anyway yeah it's it's no use contemplating like comics like yeah. fiction anyway like yeah. creators are going to like do some like, stuff what what i what i went i went into a deep dive today and what i read was that like one of the gems is loki's like staff gem uh, that's that's one of the infinity gems so there are two left there are six infinity infinity stones uh yeah four have been have, already shown yeah i have a feeling they might just end up with five because of like movie constraints otherwise like they might draw it too long or i don't well, know maybe they have they... what like what yeah. movies do they have left they're not doing another iron man movie i don't think yeah. they're doing another I... captain america they're I doing another the thor next... yeah the next movie is straight up avengers 2 right like there's no in between movies now yeah yeah there's no in between movies they will do avengers 2 ultron will show up they beat beat him whatever but then after that there's there's a cap yeah. there's a captain america movie there's a thor movie will yeah. scarlet which in quicksilver get a movie maybe i don't know uh, maybe but right now at like least in the plans the, that they released, like, yeah. it's not where's there the, yeah where's the black the, widow there are movie, two more like, guardians of the galaxy films that they're going to make because that film is clearly very be, has been very very successful for them yeah. uh <laughs> so like what is that leave if they do ant-man if ant-man gets made by some miracle uh that's there's an ant-man trilogy before avengers 3 as well i guess or not no, before no, no. avengers No, they 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 won't like make an entire trilogy before Avengers. It will it will just be one Ant Man movie. That's probably Otherwise, one Ant Man movie then. Yeah. Before Avengers. But yeah, I don't know. Like what they'll do? Maybe they'll like have two stones in one or something. I don't know. Like See, I, what I, I, I like what I'm waiting for is like the entire DC universe to show up in the third Avengers movie. Like the Guardians show up, the Avengers show up. Like fuck okay. <laughs> it. Oh, I because I thought you said the I am waiting for the entire DC universe to show up, and I was like, wow, no, no, that's no, no, one. Sorry. Yeah, I said I said that by mistake. I'm, I'm waiting for the entire Marvel universe to show up in in the event, third Avengers. Yeah. Movie. That would be a good. The entire DC thing, universe like, will kind of show up in the in in yeah. friggin' Dawn of Justice, I guess. Uh, yeah. Which I'm hoping is good. I'm hoping it's yeah. good inside. I'm hoping like somebody like sends them an email saying there are more colors than like black and gray. Like, Whatever, man. Dark Knight was successful, yeah. so basically everything has to be grim dark in DC now. I, that's just the rule. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. They're introducing yeah. Wonder Woman, so uh, like there will be color, hopefully, because her no, universe is not see that. Like, it, like her her photo was like entirely brown, basically. Yeah, it yeah. was very muted. The colors were they can, very they muted. They can change a costume after the first film. Whatever, I'm okay yeah. with. It. Whatever, <laughs> they can change that stupid costume. Whatever. It's yeah, I'm just. Yeah. I'm just If hoping it turns out to be a good is, movie. What is it? Because she looks the part. Uh She looks Yeah, no, I I I don't have like problem with casting as such, but like yeah, just the general tone. But hey, who knows? Uh Okay, man, look, if the movie is is got, like I like you said, if the movie has 20 minutes of Superman getting the shit kicked out of him by Mech Batman, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By Mech Batman. Or what yeah, will yeah. happen is that they'll have this epic battle, which like all of Gotham is destroyed, and then at the end, like one random person pops up from the wreckage and is like, "The he saved us," and then everyone is like, <laughs> "The remaining five people are like, yeah, he's they saved us." They are definitely going to have to address that, address the concern that uh, Superman destroyed like Metropolis in that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're going to have to address that, and like I think yeah. they're going to address that by having Batman go after him, which. It's kind of cool, but they need no, to. I, no, but the, you you've read that they've said it to be like Batman has been doing his shit for like thirty years in the movie, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. He's older. He's much, much older than uh, than yeah, Clark. Yeah, and and actually, apparently, so what is Wonder. Yeah. So is Wonder. What I don't like, get is where like Mark Zuckerberg and... comes into all of this because he's he's also the villain in that. Right? He's Lex Luthor. Yeah, he is going to be the main villain, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's young like, Lex Luthor. Yeah. Like I, he's I not, have a but, feeling but he's not that definitely... like I think they are, I have a feeling this might be the president version of Lex Luthor that they're setting up. They no, they need I to know. like need... Jesse Eisenberg is too young to make like uh, like president. Like they they will definitely do a, like Mark Zuckerberg like Lex Luthor controls the entire internet the kind of oh. thing. Oh also Carl he... Drogo is Thor by the way. Uh, what? Carl, what? sorry Carl Drogo is Aquaman. Sorry. Yeah yeah, yeah. he is Aquaman. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. That could oh, wait, be really uh, good. the guy from Game of Thrones. Yes, yeah, the, the giant too. Yeah. Aquaman. Oh, that guy is Aquaman. Like, hmm, I am just not be like, huh? Like that does not like look like Aquaman to me for some reason. I don't. Know. Well, yeah, but yeah, maybe it will work. Well, yeah. yeah, he's I mean, got a, he's got okay. the physique to pull it off. Like, yeah, he's got the physique yeah. to pull it off. Uh, and he, like, if they're doing the the if they're doing no, I mean, the like, not topic, the, uh, human yeah, hating. I mean, no, go ahead. If they're doing the misanthropic human hating Namor, then he's perfect for the part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's what, like, like I say, I was looking at Aquaman, and Aquaman has always been like very goofy. Like so, yeah, that that guy always has been completely serious. So I mean, I guess he'll fit in with the grim, dark tone of the DC thing. Uh-huh. But like, oh, yeah. Aquaman is usually like the one of the most goofiest superheroes. Like I have seen. One of those like like, co- uh, like co- look, so look like there was one of his like series of comics where like you won't believe how Aquaman fought crime, like he drove around the city in a truck that had an aquarium at the back, and then like he would dr- stop in front of criminals and like summon and like th- there would be an octopus in the truck, aquarium truck, and the octopus would then attack the criminals, like so <laughs> Aquaman was always one of the like goofiest kind of villains. Oh wait! Like wait. heroes, I mean, like. I just yeah, confused. I just confused two characters. Namor is the Submariner, and he's Marvel. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's Marvel. Yeah, Namor yeah. is Marvel. Yeah. So and this guy is like. Yeah, okay. you're right. Like, well, there probably is a misanthropic Aquaman out there, considering there's been iterations of everything. Yeah. So they probably do the dark brooding one who drinks and has issues. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they'll. They, yeah. DC will like. Uh, like investigate like five thousand multiverses until they find the dark broody version of every superhero, <laughs> and they'll <laughs> cast that. I I hope to God that if like Batman and Superman are both going to be brooding douchebags, then like Wonder Woman is the it is played as the the comic relief who does not take herself as seriously as both of them. <laughs> the... Yeah, man, like I... that movie is crying out for a raccoon to just come in and like lighten the mood, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie is crying <laughs> for like someone to just show up and and be a kind of a pressure valve that kind of diffuses all the tense situations. Yeah. Where it's like you know, Wonder Woman shows up and like you two, both of you should have a talking like this contest. Uh, <laughs> there, there definitely has to be a scene where like Batman tries to do the voice and somebody calls him on it. I'm oh Batman. my god! What what happens is oh my god! What happens is that Superman is like about to. Punch Batman into oblivion, and then Batman just starts dancing all of a sudden. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and like that, that buys them enough time to like for to kryptonite inject him. Yeah, kryptonite injection. Yeah, obviously, for for wow. Mark Zuckerberg to make a kryptonite inj- injection, and then like you know, power of friendship and all that. Yeah, that's how they did. <laughs> Wow, guys! But, but, yeah, but if I really they, love like. Okay, yeah. what, what, so what if they end this movie with friendship is magic and Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman all holding hands to defeat Lex Luthor? <laughs> <laughs> I will watch this three times in the theater. I don't give a shit. Mm. Oh man, it would be awesome. Yeah. If they no, but that. yeah, like I love this part. Like it just like and and it doesn't bother to like just try to justify the fact that there's like aliens and like. All of this weird technology, and it's just like yeah, rolling with it, yeah. And and yeah. the intro, like which they just missed, like it was perfect, like the one where like both the emotional scene and the one where the guy is dancing, yeah. like he's yeah. just like you know. <laughs> yeah, so I like. I really also like that they don't spend too much time trying to build up his past and his character. They just like you find out who he is as you go along the way. Yeah. There is not uh, there is not twenty minutes devoted to he grew up with this group of people. 
Yeah. Uh, like you just meet the group of people he grew up with along the way and it's it's well done. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, yeah, like that's the yeah, that's another thing. Like they they don't bother with the origin story part. It was just like, yeah, you learn about them as they go. Like uh, but yeah, like lo- it's one of those movies where like almost every scene for me at least like has something to talk about. Like like the collector guy, like he's only there for like five minutes, but but like I'm all like impression. yeah, I wanted more of that guy. Like I I was I thought he would be a villain in this like actually. Nah, but, I knew he wouldn't be a villain just yet. I think he's definitely like again. I think collector is also being set up for Avengers three. Uh, I wonder if they're gonna do a Howard the Duck movie. No, there's what no way. What is Howard the do. Duck like? Because I did not know like what that duck is basically. Okay, it so was like there was, they, was text. That's why I knew. It was an extremely popular Marvel character uh, that was created by a guy called Steve Gerber, and uh, he basically had a lot of like he had a he had a very very contentious relationship with Marvel after he left, and uh, he like sued them for them using it, and he tried to get the copyright to to for Howard the Duck back, and then. He went to Image Comics and started a series called Destroyer Duck, and there's a lot of shit involved with it. Marvel made a try to make a Howard the Duck movie in which Howard the Duck has sex with a woman, uh, and he has a human girlfriend, by the way. That's no, oh, that this this sounds like the Sonic of the Marvel universe, literally. Well, no, the character, <laughs> the character in the comics is kind of like it is. It is a very kind of you know for his time kind of character. It's not mm. something that work now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not popular. like a like a raccoon worked on in a movie, so not like a duckkin. Well, yeah, but <laughs> not that a duck that fucks human women. I don't know that. I don't know that that is saleable anymore. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah. But yeah. So anyway, yeah, like it was one movie. Like I think, like they they definitely succeeded with the part. Like they always aim to like set up five future movies in one movie. Or at least like a two or three. So they definitely succeeded with that. Yeah, like I mean, I yeah, I want, I can't wait to see more of this. I, I like, I'm sure they'll 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 do a good job with the next one, uh, as long as they maintain this tone, I guess. Yeah, there is definitely like, like you can definitely like have a lighter tone. Like there's no problem with that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This was fun. Like I mean, I think I don't think they have anything bad to say about it. Yeah, I mean, I just like I don't want to fall into the trap where I'm like, oh my god, that scene was awesome and that scene was awesome, and because like <laughs> that's what I like, I'm like holding back right now, because a lot of those scenes, like for example, when when like the Batista leg- call like drunk calls the villain, like what the hell was that? <laughs> like <laughs> that was good. Uh, like I I think almost every scene with Batista in it is awesome, but my yeah. probably my. One of my favorite scenes is uh, like like they just said earlier, right? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, like there was one observation that I made. Like Ronan, you know, like he killed a lot of people. Does that make him an assassin Cree? What the fuck, dude? Fuck you. Fuck, <laughs> you. fuck you. Fuck you for that. Fuck you for that joke. Fuck you for thinking of that joke. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't not think of that. Like that was obvious. Like I can't wait for the tie-in personally. No, see, none of us think in like horrible puns. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, If there's no sequel, uh, Ronan's dead. Unless they do like a prequel, which is like the bad guys of whatever. Nah, like he was like they, they didn't spend enough time on this guy. Like they like he was like he was literally unchangeable with the guy, the villain in Thor two, whoever the fuck that was. I can't even recall. You could have swapped both of them, and it would basically be the same. Uh, yep. Well, yep. Probably you could have swapped both of them, and it probably ended up being the same. Actually, if they had just had the Thor two villain in this as someone who came back and tried to get another Infinity Stone, I'd be okay with that too. Uh, <laughs> that would have been interesting. Uh, that like yeah, whatever. It, it'll be fun. I can't like literally. This was a fun movie. There's there's nothing more to say about it. Uh, unless anything, any of you have anything more to say about it. You should not keep like just showering praise on it. <laughs> yeah, enough. Like, yeah, let's not try to like become cheerleaders for a corporate behemoth. Disney, in fact, yeah, it's not even like a corporate behemoth. It's the, yeah, 
Fuck Disney. Fuck Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> wow. And on that, and on that note, uh, let's talk about unrest, man. The opposite of like a big corporation thing. <laughs> okay. So how, how, how's it been? How's the how's the last uh, two weeks, three weeks treated you? Yeah, almost two weeks, I think. Definitely not three. Maybe two well, and a half now. Well, three the podcast, but yeah, two weeks. Yeah, year, yeah. Yeah, so mostly just been very hectic. Like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely pleased with the like re- the amount of like uh, the amount of people that have played it. I guess like I don't know. Like yeah, they, it's definitely been more than any of my previous games. That's for certain. That's good news. Uh, yeah. So are you happy with the response you've been getting? Like the bunch of reviews have rolled out. Some were a bit late. Uh, I like you probably won't be able to talk about that stuff. But are you happy with the critical response? Yeah, and I'm mostly are- like yeah. Uh, like most uh, most critics like have uh, like sort of got the what the game was aiming for. Like in terms of like tone and story and such. Okay. So yeah, I I'm happy with that. Like the graphics and such. Yeah, like. there has been criticism of the graphics which i agree with but then like it's one of those things which i was like powerless to prevent i guess because like we like i didn't have the like resources to actually sure. like, do anything like, about that i don't know there has been as much criticism of the graphics as there has been a polish but again even polish is not something that you can control considering what your budget was uh, there's only a certain amount of time available But you can continue paying everyone on the team while being able to polish the game, right? Uh, yeah, that was a that was one of the problems actually uh, that we had uh, with it. Like at the end, like we uh, like could have thought of like spending another month or so, but then like it was it was get be getting difficult to work to continue working on it because especially when uh, like because as independent developers we don't have like access to like you know market ratings or something. so we yeah. don't know how it's going to perform like for all we know that like everyone who wanted the game already bought it during kickstart so it's it's that one of those things which like you can't really uh, you can't keep delaying it infinitely or you can't spend too much time polishing it in the hopes that that will make sales just boom because yeah like yeah we can't be we can't do it like blizzard does basically yeah yeah and like i mean again for a game like this there It, anyway you're aiming at a niche audience there this is like it's going to be very hard for this game to find mass appeal uh i don't know if you agree with that uh, uh no like with it yeah it's definitely because a lot of people will will uh, like just will uh, be like no there's a certain level of graphics i want from my games if i don't get that then uh, like i there's no like they won't play it and like, this is this yeah. is a thing which i have seen a lot like it's it's one of those things where you know it's uh it's like those fame infamous coffee surveys where everyone is like i like my coffee strong but then actually yeah, everyone yeah, like, like he can milk he <laughs> in, in, in yeah. you actually look at what they're drinking yeah so that's exactly like so there have been so many forum comments where like i i like they're like gameplay is clearly the best thing but and and i know that graphics aren't everything but i won't play it because of the graphics So that's one thing which like you just have to deal with, because like yeah. as much as I would like to, I can't really change the nature of like people. So yeah, fair enough. Uh, no, so yeah, what, like otherwise I'm pretty there, happy. Is there anyone with, like, you are pissed off at? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not really of, pissed off at. Is there any kind of like any kind of criticism that you feel was unfair from forums, from critics, whatever? Well, I mean, there was one guy who called it disappointment of the year, like when the Kickstarter was in 15 days. So I hope like that guy is like reconsiders because there have been bigger disappointments than unrest. But hey, <laughs> yeah, that was just yeah. Otherwise, that's what did the disappointment of the year? Uh, no, there was just this one random guy in like some forum who was like, "Whoa, what the hell is this game? Disappointment of the year?" Because apparently, like they. They were like, I want to play as a Mughal prince or something. I don't even know what the hell that person Mughal. wanted. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. That's yeah, kind of like, like, yeah. It, it was basically like a troll post, not really. And then there was this one guy on Pirate Bay, like, in Andrus, who was like, "Well, this game is the worst." And like, 
they they were they were writing like a 12 year old and at the same uh, in the same breath criticizing the writing of the game so i found that very funny <laughs> like even other people in the pirate bay like found that funny so i don't know but yeah like apart from that just yeah there is no uh, all of the like published stuff has been very like well thought out even if i don't agree with their sentiment i think it, it has been more like well thought out and like some some places just naturally i guess value polish more than that but that's completely understandable because yeah i mean since the yeah. glut of indie titles have started uh, have started flooding the market and about to end indie games for everyone uh, there has been a premium <laughs> based on polish of course uh, that being said like Yeah, I didn't like. I mean, I played through the game. There weren't any egregious bugs. Like, I, it didn't crash even once for me. I'm sure that you must have had crash bugs, considering that a lot of people have played it. I didn't have any save save issues. I didn't have. Well, I played through it in one set city, so you can take that as you want. Uh, and I didn't have any crash bugs, and I didn't have any save save file issues. Like, it played pretty well for me in those angles. There were like buggy moments where you could see stuff, uh, where you could see screen tearing and stuff like that, but. uh other than that there was not really like anything egregiously bad like the lack of polish just showed in terms of uh there being like spelling mistakes in the dialogue and stuff like that and like i mean yeah we spoke about that and you said that it just came down to the amount of time you guys had to just iterate on dialogue uh yeah i mean it's not like uh like there was just something which uh like there were basically uh, at at the most there were two qa testers in the game so i'm actually surprised because like we were uh, super scared when the game was going out uh, we were like oh my god there's going to be so many bugs how the hell are we going to like deal with all of that but like yeah. there was definitely yeah like it was like less uh, like scary than i thought like i guess that's always because, good that's always yeah. good yeah I think like with uh, if we would have uh, had like with a with a, like a, a, just a two people dedicated QA team, uh, we would have been able to do that. Uh, like just be like ship completely bug free. But but and there were a couple of bugs which were just uh, related to underlying stuff. So like it bugs in SDL for example. So okay. I couldn't help with those. Like those were just like stuff which I discovered myself. But yeah, I mean, apart- there are all, like I mean, there's no game that's going to ship 100% bug free. That's not possible. Uh, like, there's always going to be some bugs that slip through. Yeah, definitely. And uh, again, and like, it's, yeah, it's not like, like multi-platform like games. Have it's... Q8 testers full time, 24/7. Yeah. Testing. I mean, ultimately, like, if you have read the the like, we we published a post-mortem for this game. Yeah. Uh, yeah if you read that, then yeah, like, I was working on like hundred dollars per month. So what's that like? that's 6000 rupees so like i can do more if i literally like start laying bricks well i mean like houses and stuff yeah a call center a call center job place three yeah. or four times right now it's uh yeah so i mean yeah like in the end we were just uh, like restrict that's part of the reason why we like uh, we couldn't do stuff like an intro movie or like you know uh, like m- more locations or just like extra sprites or something yeah, so, yeah, yeah. no but i'm overall like i'd say it's a uh, like we did a good job at, at like compromising at the right stuff i guess like i don't well, know like there i mean like, tejas and i played it and like we will te- i mean i've told you what i th- what i thought of it already and uh, like i mean tejas i think just finished it a couple of minutes before the podcast started uh oh. so he's fresh off finishing unrest okay so yeah tejas what do you think of the game yeah just let me know i guess uh on the podcast or would you like a mail <laughs> Well I mean if it's like an opinion that can be said publicly then sure if you are if you want to like send me death threats or something then like maybe off the podcast but I'll, do, I'll send you death I'll send you a death uh death threat later tonight how's that <laughs> okay. Uh no so, but uh seriously I like first of all you have to understand that uh text based games and uh that sort of thing are not my forte or things that i really go for so right off the bat you know like just the basic premise of the game is not something i'm inherently you know really going to enjoy 
But I did uh, go into it, and I remember like uh, the first two chapters. Be- being a lore hound, I read through you know everything. I was you know uh, you know reading the journal and all that. And by the time I got to the third chapter, I kind of started to fall off of that. You know where it, uh, it it just didn't feel like you know knowing everything mattered as much. Because I, I figured that okay, I'm going into a game where. No, maybe reading everything would give me like some sort of upper hand or something like that. So that didn't quite really translate. It was just, okay, I know a little bit more about the world. But, you know, that aside, I, I enjoyed the game a bit, but there were like, you know, some things that were a bit off. And I guess that's what I'll mail you about is that just some things that maybe didn't make sense to me or I'd like to ask you about. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, they, like, I mean, what what you were telling me about was the ending. You you didn't understand the ending. Yeah, right? that that was uh, kind of. That is a that is a common criticism that I think has been leveled at uh, or been almost universal. Uh, but I mean, like, I, like I think even even you have a position, Arvind. You have like that ending was largely as designed for certain reasons, right, Arvind? Yeah, I mean, like when I, when I was like thinking of the ending, uh, like, and the entire team was like thinking about it, uh, we realized that like. Uh, making one faction win would be kind of weird because really oh. like uh, like the entire game is leading towards the point where like the city is going is fucked anyway basically like mm-hmm. yeah spoiler warning by the way like for people <laughs> who are listening to this but, but yeah I mean, like yeah. i said there there is a situation where you can mitigate the damage as much as possible yeah exactly like all of the endings like the the basically the dialogue in the ending changes a lot like i, I like there are like like at one node changes like in 16 different ways or something but but the point is that uh, all you can basically do is to see like to minimize losses for certain people based on what so yeah like i it, it's not like yeah i guess ultimately like it's not it's a very like sad ending anyway like for no matter what you do i guess that's one thing which uh, yeah i don't know like how to exactly uh, like uh, communicate in this podcast i guess but but yeah like i can see why that might be a problem for a lot of because like there were a lot of people who were like who were invested in the characters more than i thought like some people were genuinely upset that for example like like they no, couldn't the, like tanya and hanu did not get a happy ending or tanya and yeah Hanu yeah happy ending. yeah I, I, and that, then, I, like, that i have read a lot on uh, just random twitter stuff yeah. that i found uh, yeah, no, that that is one thing which I actually like disagree with, as in like the happy end. Because like the the thing is, uh, we can't uh, tell you what would happen in like Tanya if Tanya and Haru get married, because no matter what we do, it's not an accurate representation of what happens. The entire point is that you don't know what's going to happen. Like in if you enter into like you know where, where there is an abusive family, and they have their money problems and. Like if we, for example, uh, like say that, okay, yeah, it's a happy marriage. Then it's like, oh yeah. So you're advocating like staying in a shitty relationship. Or like, <laughs> and if we, and yeah. if we say, oh, it, it ends badly, then it's like, oh, then what's the point of this scenario? Why the hell did you do that? Like, why am I even doing this? But so I like mean, the entire point is that you can not see the future. Like you don't know what will happen. Like, sure. So, so yeah, I don't know about that. Like. I, I like again. I, like I said, I, I, uh, my my problem was not as much with that. I think uh, I think that scenario is probably more interesting if you get to play through it anyway. What happens in the future? Uh, because it's largely about making decisions where you can leverage your position or your power in a more better better situation. I don't know. Yeah. Like I, again, like I said, I don't know that there is uh, there is a scenario where uh, if she she marries this guy and everything turns out uh, tickety boo, but. I think it can turn out in a not as bad fit situation as it necessarily has to. I suppose, like I said, it's about mitigating damage, right? It's not about yeah. winning. Uh, hmm. And yeah, like I mean, I was okay with that chapter. Like I think my problems were more with resolution for specifically the priest and uh, the mercenary captain. Specifically, what happens to the mercenary captain's company? Uh, that that and. Yeah, I mean, I don't, like I don't mind so much what happened in the ending. Like I thought that epilogue chapter was a bit uh, poorly presented. I'd say 
that that is my one complaint about the epilogue but other than that like i think the chapters that preceded it uh, starting from bhagwan bhagwan sham uh, asha planning her coup and uh, asha like basically talking to all the people at the end the big climactic moment i think those were like successively you had four really strong chapters and that kind of made the made the game for me personally mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, my favorite chapter is actually Tanya's chapter, like that one. Okay, that is but my yeah. least favorite chapter. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like. I don't know why. I like the first two chapters are my least favorite chapters, uh, mainly because I felt that there's a lot of table setting in them, and by the time yeah, the get... first like the first two scenes, I guess like the one with the like Naga and the one with like the Asha's first scene. those are yeah. just like setting the the stage for what's going yeah. to happen there's a lot of table setting there and i i enjoyed uh, a lot like a lot more from that point onwards that being said like i the my least favorite chapter is still probably danya's chapter because for various reasons whatever uh, i i i enjoyed the chapters following it uh, i like i don't know i have no idea what chapter they just uh, like in what order they just enjoyed what chapters or whatever Uh, might have to think about it. Okay. Overall, I'd say I had a good time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm pretty happy with like how the game turned out. Definitely, like, happier than my, my previous couple of games. But yeah, definitely, like, it's not like I don't think like it's perfect by any means, or like there are like some stumbling moments. But yeah, like, I guess like some of the stuffs was just like. Uh, me being limited by a lot of factors, so hopefully yeah. like that's less lessened in the future. But of yeah, course. we'll see. I'm overall like I think like yeah, the re- the reception has been promising like for this I game. I think considering the circumstances under which you made this game and the team with which you made this game, you made the best possible game you could have made. That's what I'd say. Uh, which is pretty good. Like I mean, that's what you want to do in under any, under any circumstances. You want to put in your best effort and make the best possible thing and. Oh, like yeah the like i said the almost the, the last four chapters with the exception of the, the last five chapters with the exception of the epilogue are are really really good i really like the situation that the priest has to deal with and that asha has to deal with in the slums uh and of course the mercenary captain is my favorite character so i i love that chapter that was <laughs> that had that had some good writing in it i yeah i like yeah it's good he did a good job Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we are we are totally like yeah because pre podcast chat we were like having all sorts of good discussion about like guardians and unrest and now suddenly like we are on being recorded and like we just yeah the sting has gone out of our opinions. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, well, fuck unrest, man. You, like just whatever, man. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm never touching that game again ever. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the thing is, they just is telling the truth under the guise of pretending to tell a lie. No, like I, I know this. Yeah, like I know, like because you know, like they just has difficulty is reading, so that's why, like, I can understand. <laughs> it's not, it's right, not that. Right. It is that he is severely allergic to any kind of narrative heavy game. I don't know why. Like, I'm betting someone told him you play narrative games and you're not cool. <laughs> and ever since then, that has stuck in his head. Right. <laughs> what? Uh, so, what, what is next for uh, Parodacto? Eh, I don't know. Like, still waiting on like some data, like to see how well Unrest has done, and like if there is even like scope for like Unrest to the Restless or something. The Restless. Unrest. Wow, Unrest. That, was, that a... was what In Exile called it actually. Like, uh, like In Exile <laughs> did a giveaway. Like, they contacted me about this. Yeah. So they they called it Unrest to the Restless. So I was like, wow. yeah, In Exile. Now I'll probably Back have to. Max of Andres. Now it's time for Fundres, starring Salman Khan. Ah. Uh, <sighs> Whatever, But, man. Yeah. Don't knock it. Yeah. Don't, Andres don't 2 is going it. to be an endless runner with you like driving a Land Rover and stuff. Like you know how to score points. Oh But, yeah. God! If you're <laughs> making a Singham game and that's Andres 2. Yeah. Yeah. It was also a, like the thing, you know, like it was a reference to. the the other thing but but okay yeah Doesn't what matter. other thing i said land rover right driving a land rover and scoring points like uh, oh oh wow driving yeah. over people on the pay- oh wow <laughs> wow 
I did not think you would you would get that 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 quickly. Okay. Okay, uh, but yeah, no, but uh, otherwise, yeah, like we'll we'll and we will still have to see what happens to like the unrest world if you're going to like revisit it or whatever. Like people okay. are like some at least at least ten people have contacted me with the saying that they would like to see a sequel. I don't know if those are the only ten people in the world, but like chances are they might be. So I don't know. But yeah, we'll right. see how that pans out. Other than that, yeah, we like I am like just concepting another game. Like it will definitely not be what you expect. That much I can like guarantee. But uh, yeah, otherwise, yeah. I don't even know what to make of that statement right now. It won't be what I expect, huh? Fun rest. Yeah, it, no, it'll just be this dude sleeping, and it'll be called rest. No, 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 no. It'll be called. Yeah, it'll be called this. Oh yeah, boy. Yeah, but that would be nice. If, like the podcast <laughs> viewers like could could see that, but okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Done I'll, rest. I'll, yeah, I'll read it out. Done rest. <laughs> Huh. But but yeah, I don't know what to do. Yeah, we we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, I haven't even gotten paid anything. Like I I'll get paid at the end of August because that's how Steam works. Steam works. You see what how I much sweet, sweet like, money are you expecting to come into your bank account, Arvind? Are yeah, you going to be know, a problem now? Much, yeah, I'm definitely not the next notch. I can definitely categorically oh. state that. <laughs> Probably not even the next Fulbright. Like. Probably not even well, like. Is there anything I've, like less richer okay. than like Fulbright like, and not? Sure. Again, let let us be let us be completely fair. There was, like, it is just it is almost a hundred percent unfair to expect that level of success for any kind of game that is coming out that does not have the kind of connections that those people have. Like Notch, fine. Notch did it uh, almost entirely. Like it it. Minecraft had a slow build up and spread through word of mouth. No, no. Yeah, that that that's not the thing. Like, yeah, I'm, I was just joking. I didn't actually mean that. I was expecting that because yeah, like, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking about just, that. I'm, uh, I'm talking like, about. I'm talking about it from point of view that, it, on one level, like I'm really impressed that you managed to make this and put it out there and and have it get as much coverage and as much reaction from people as it has because. uh it is tremendously difficult to have like you've done a fantastic job in that respect uh just getting this game made and getting the word out that something like this exists is nothing it's like it's kind of like a sisyphean task man you're like trying to push up a boulder up a hill that just going to roll back up down down on you the next day it's fucking amazing that you've done that uh yeah i'm going to stop being nice to you because it feels weird Yeah, I was going to ask you if you know. Yeah, I was yeah. Kind of getting a tingling in your fingers. Was, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was wondering if this was a dream or something. But yeah. Uh no, like I mean it is it is ama- it is amazing that it has gotten the kind of coverage that it has with because like I know you and you do not have the kind of I mean now you do maybe but you do not have the kind of pull that someone like Steve Gainer has. Uh No, yeah, like we'll see like we'll the see kind of coverage that he will get. Like I mean, yeah. he his company changed his name from the Fulbright Company to Fulbright, and that got around the stories at every major publication. They changed their logo, <laughs> and and that was cause for a story from every major gaming website. Uh, I guess it was a slow news day. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, But, no, that's. Good. So yeah, like we'll see what happens next. Like I don't have anything. Yeah, probably like. I don't even know to do like a Kickstarter or whatever, but yeah, we'll see because yeah, the first thing which which I need to see is like if I can afford to continue paying the people that made Unrest for another game. Okay. So yeah, first we'll have to see that, and I guess yeah, this is one problem which like like it's just like this thing that like you always get paid one month later. That's that that might actually kill a lot of studios now that I think about it, <laughs> because. Because like you like I, the game released on July twenty third, right? And like I'll yeah. get paid on like September the first or something. So like there's suddenly like third forty days or so to, to be like oh now everyone's nervous. Like everyone is still nervous at least like in Pyrodactyl because we don't like we do, we are like oh my god what's going to happen? Like is it going to be enough or whatever? 
so yeah uh, i don't know like there there that can be improved i don't know but, but i don't know how like wiser people than me must decide that yeah i guess but i mean the uh, i mean you're talking mainly about steam right steam payments will come in that late or everything will come in no no on... everything every store because oh, wow. like in in digital distribution like that's how uh, like google also does it that's how apple also does it so like everyone every new company like follows the exact same round like nobody bothers to change anything that's like they'll change the 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 front page and they'll change like some minor thing but they'll not change too much i don't know no, why okay yeah but oh. yeah like i don't know like maybe there there should be some sort of like because like for independent developers this is like a major thing if you can get like your first week's sales like in like 15 days like that's like that yeah that, like that, that that might be money that. for that might be money to make rent for some people uh yeah uh yeah i mean congratulations on putting unrest out congratulations on the reception and stuff man good job that mm-hmm. is and and on that depressive no uh let's <laughs> yeah <laughs> goodbye everyone good night yeah. uh <laughs> what happened this week did any okay i finished splinter cell blacklist ah uh, yes yeah okay that's definitely a video about... game yeah it's a video game i finished it it ends with the the villain that i have been chasing over a the course of i think i don't know 10 or 12 really large missions telling me that there are 12 countries behind him and once he dies they will rise up and then i decide not to kill him and fake his death and interrogate him in a cell in the end whatever uh, what other options did you have i didn't have so, any options i wasn't given options oh i mean i thought you said like i decided to so i thought like there was well, the option I mean, to just kill him well i mean i pressed the x button and sam fisher exercised the fifth freedom <laughs> <laughs> press x to exercise the fifth freedom yes yeah. he exercised the fifth freedom <laughs> wow if only it was that easy yeah whatever dude yeah. uh, like yeah, i mean that puts that puts like deus ex human revolutions three button ending into context like turns out <laughs> they just needed the one button instead of three they just need a, like every game needs a fifth freedom button i swear <laughs> to god the yeah. number of times i exercised fifth freedom in this game like in there there's a shitload of times in the end like i think 5 minutes before i exercised fifth freedom and and decided to like fake the villain's death and put him into like high security prison uh, one of my teammates decided to exercise fifth freedom to kill the secretary of defense who was dis- giving away Wait, state thought, secrets yeah this just i i just realized like how come fifth freedom also allows you to kill the secretary of state of your own country Sec- like secretary of defense sorry secretary of defense oh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, so i mean because, again like <laughs> because logic <laughs> <laughs> because it's a tom clancy novel and the fifth freedom is whatever like there the after 911 america has had to make sacrifices to protect itself yo yeah oh, wow. <laughs> speaking of which there is a mission in gitmo you break into gitmo uh really yeah you break what, into guantanamo yeah what's it with like all video games and like gitmo all of a sudden there was the metal gear thing and now this Like uh, what's it with video games and get more all of a sudden? I, I, I think no, I, mean, I think it uh, became more prevalent in Google searches, so people are like, oh, okay, let's use this place. I mean, in general, this this new Splinter Cell's uh, tone is very ripped from the headlines. Like one of the first missions is in Benghazi. Uh, you know, it's it's very very ripped from the headlines. I mean, a, a lot of the co-op missions are in uh, areas that are known to have like a lot of tense fighting going on. They do everything except. have a mission in the west bank <laughs> what's the west bank again like i don't the west bank the west bank israel and palestine <laughs> oh right yeah a, but, but that was mission. because like this is more recent than what like the game was made in so, well i mean there has been tension on the west bank before uh, <laughs> before yeah, no, that i mean there there has but it, i guess like it only like recently it has come to a fore like more intensely than what but happened recently before. there's like recently there's been a war uh, so yeah. sure but i mean there has always been fighting going on the fighting yeah, hasn't definitely. yeah uh but i don't remember a video game going to that region of the world and being set in israel and palestine like i mean outside of the first assassin's creed jerusalem uh 
I don't remember a video game being set in that part of the world. Uh, anyway, Splinter Cell Blacklist ended. It had some really good missions and a really, really hilarious story, which, I, like, I am grateful that I played this game just to just to see how stupid the story could get, and it 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 did not disappoint. It got really fucking stupid by the end of the <laughs> the end of the ride. Uh, like, I hope they go back to being much more low-key and, like, not so goddamn self-serious because the the amount of, like, we're doing this to save Murica is uh, <laughs> really, really silly. Uh, the only thing, like, there's a, literally a dialogue in between where, you know, uh, to show that Sam Fisher is a nice guy, one of his, uh, one of his senior, like one of a one person who's worked with him for a long time, tells him, "You know, Sam, the only thing that matters to you more than the mission is the team." Wow. <laughs> Wait, I thought you you were you were going to say like the only thing that matters to you more is America or something. No, no, it's it's not that bad. The only thing that matters more than the mission is the team. Uh, wow. Yeah, like it's, at this point, yeah, like Sam Fisher has like sort of like is one of those the like, characters which is like gone past the realm of believe believability, I guess. Like I don't know. Yes, I agree. Uh, like he, this new game just completely changes his character and and uh, it is not believable at all. Yeah, I mean it's one of those things, you know, like it's the diehard thing, where like in the first diehard movie, like that guy, like Bruce Willis was like, yeah, okay, he's a every man who's like risen to the occasion but by the fourth die hard he has become some sort of demigod and you like wonder why everyone isn't like just bowing to their supremacy or something it's kind well, of like I, that i guess i think by the fourth die hard everyone is bowing to his supremacy because i think there's literally a dialogue where a guy says you killed a helicopter with a car <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, but that's actually like, the, but the, the way that's said is, is more like, oh my God, you did that. But like, actually what it should have been said was like, yeah, you killed it. Like, that's every Tuesday for you, right? That's what it should have been like. Well, it's every Christmas. It's every Christmas for John McClane is the time when he decides to blow shit up and just have a, have a <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I finished Nindersel Blacklist. Uh, what, what have you guys been playing? I, Arvind, I, I, I don't think has been doing anything other than checking his email. For I've us. actually been uh, like playing this one game that's called Hoplite. It's a, uh, it's a game I downloaded from. Stop Am- right there! Stop right there! Have you been playing a game on your turn 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 mobile phone? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was I the name of the game? Hoplite. It's a, it's a puzzle game basically, but, but it's like. Uh, it's a turn-based combat game where you are a hoplite descending into like multiple levels of hell to get like some MacGuffin or something. So uh-huh. so it's a it's a very fun game where uh, like uh, what you do is like there are like four or five different types of enemies, only four or five, and each level is basically like it starts with them in a random arrangement and just you, and you have like a couple of abilities and you have to navigate the level properly. So it's a right. very great like puzzle game. Uh, but it's like it it has this like turn based combat skin on it yeah i find it like really like uh like i got it for like 2 dollars but but it wasn't actually 2 dollars because i had some like amazon credit from uh, i don't know what so i got it like for 2 dollars and like it has no like ads microtransaction any of that bullshit just lets me like play for that it's it's a, almost like a rogue like you you have to, you can choose an ability like each level if you pray at a temple or you right. can just like if if like the temple is surrounded by like tougher enemies you can choose to just run to the next one without like okay. praying so yeah it, it it's a very like nicely designed game like very minimalist like there's no flashy graphics or anything but but very well designed okay yeah i i definitely recommend like checking it out like i have played it at least like 4 or 5 hours and i think for 2 dollars that's like more than enough that you can expect Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would, awesome. yeah, I mean, I, I was actually playing it during this podcast. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you don't need that much. Like, if once you get like, like you know, once you get the idea, uh, like it's all about positioning. So, what you can do is you can like, uh, you can tap somebody to see their line of sights and where they will attack yeah. next turn. So the <laughs> entire positioning somebody. is about. Uh, 
no so the entire like game is about uh, you seeing which tiles are safe and how you can kill the maximum number of people in one turn because like you okay. can like you you only kill people when you move like you can sit sit there and like get people so you need to move uh, and like you can only kill uh, facing front so for example if you move uh, it's a hex based game so if you move yeah. and your character is facing in front they'll kill the person who's in front of them in 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 the adjacent hex okay so you so you have to see okay do i kill this person or do i kill this other person and there are enemies which throw bombs and you can shield bash the bombs to deflect them to other enemies and kill them oh so and and like you have to get close to archers because because archers can, can attack at long range but not at close range uh so yeah like it's definitely like it's it's a very interesting games like uh you there are 16 official levels as in like at the 16th level you can optionally return to the uh surface and win the game the, the but you can also keep on going like deeper so okay so yeah like it's a, it's a very well designed game i'm surprised that there hasn't been like uh, enough no but like then i should expect because it's not like it doesn't have any acquisition mechanism or like in app purchase or whatever it's a good game on it's a good game on mobile phones and no one's talking about it that's just shocking man uh, i i don't know what's gone wrong with the world uh yeah Dude, i mean i i legitimately yeah i have definitely heard of that video game i don't think it's on android yet i don't know like maybe it is But i think I don't it's want a, to like play it anyway like it's ios only uh <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I mean, that is that is a really, really weird case uh, because from what I've heard, that was a game that was already out. It was called Stardom Hollywood, yeah, and it was yeah. not doing well at all. And they just slapped the Kim Kardashian brand on it, and it started selling like hotcakes. Which uh, Blue did a really smart job by leveraging her brand at the right time, yeah. and it blew up amongst uh, the demographic that they wanted to play that game. Which good job. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, like. The only I mean, if I have the option to like do that, like I would definitely do it and laugh all the way to the bank. Like, so I don't <laughs> see a problem with that yet. Kim rest. Uh... <laughs> no, that no? that's not specific enough. Like we we can probably like figure Kim it Kardashian out. Kim like, Kardashian can rest. Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. Okay. In fact, like just remove the unrest already. Like already, just like just yeah, just that. Like just I don't Kim have Kardashian. any problem because. <laughs> No, but yeah, like I don't know about that, but yeah, I mean it's it's a case of like somebody Holy like doing. Holy shit! I just really got good. it. I just got it, dude. This is what you need to do. You remember Dashavataram, the movie in which Kamal Hassan played ten roles? You need to freaking make unrest, but then Kim Kardashian is every <laughs> character. Oh jeez. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's it. That's your fucking money yeah. maker, man. Yeah. Does yeah, somebody okay, know guys. any email? Like some? Does somebody know like the, her email? Because like yeah, I'd really like to email like with this idea. I'm pretty <laughs> sure, like yeah. that will basically be me sorted like making independent games for the rest of my life so i don't mind yeah yep <laughs> but yeah otherwise yeah. yeah like yeah i mean i don't know because i like i don't really, really want to like uh like say anything about a game which i have only heard of by other people either commenting that this is the best game or this is the like the spawn of satan or something that's literally the two levels of criticism i have seen of this game <laughs> so I, i can't comment on like because i don't even know how it plays like no clue well so i, I mean it is maybe standard... it's a platformer i don't know maybe it's a platformer i don't know no it's a standard social sim with uh, microtransaction elements embedded deep into it uh into its core it's designed around microtransactions uh which i mean yeah whatever it is it is another one of those games uh, yeah like everything else on the mobile platform that is that apparently like exists to work a certain way i guess yeah i mean i don't know like uh, yeah it's not like in it's not aimed at me and it's not like trying to appeal to me so i don't know like yeah yeah kim kardashian came out uh, but hoplite is a game that arvin has played <laughs> and he, he likes it a lot so if yeah people want to play an interesting game on phones That is the game you should play. I uh, Tom Francis, the guy who made Gunpoint, wrote a really good uh, article about it. You guys should read that. Uh, he expl- breaks down the mechanics and explains why it's uh, so awesome. All right, I'll uh, check that out. Last, yeah, the last thing we need to talk about before we uh, 
before we call it quits is uh, there was an interview of Seva Early, the CEO of Crytek in uh, Eurogamer recently. Mm-hmm. After all the trouble that Crytek has been having recently, they uh, they sold a portion of, they I think they sold an entire UK studio along with the Homefront IP that the UK studio was working on yeah. to uh, Coke Media, which is Deep Silver. Um, and uh, they have had to shut down a couple of studios and repurpose them entirely. I think their Austin uh, office, which used to be the old uh, uh, Darksiders crew, has now been mostly laid off. And the guys that are left there are working on engine support for the CryEngine titles. And yeah, he gave what was a pretty controversial... Well, he gave, he had some pretty controversial things to say about uh, some of his employees, I felt, anyway. Uh, Arvind, uh, you read this interview, right? Yeah, it's actually funny. Like, I was literally just, like, earlier in this podcast, I was, like, bemoaning how, like, hard it is, you know, to get paid late for video games. And then <laughs> did, we, have, we are discussing this interview now, where he was... He was moaning about how people can't shut up about like, like being paid late or something. Like, so yeah, I don't That's... know. Like, I I can't sympathize with that at all. I mean, the guy was like, oh yeah, you can financially plan and you can like, oh you don't, you are not responsible yeah. and like, oh that was pure bullshit. Like, I can't believe that like his PR person who was advising him for that interview, like, told him that yeah, this is a reasonable thing to say. That oh, clearly I mean... means that like the people he's around and like he are clearly not like attached to reality as such yeah yeah i mean this is very clearly a case of someone who is not uh Mm. who is completely divorced from reality making statements about things he doesn't understand just for the record he said that uh i understand that there are some people with tight financial planning and in those situations it becomes really hard for them to survive when we don't pay salary on time and we try to help out on a case-by-case basis but we cannot help everyone so he kind of made it seem like it was his employee's fault that... No, and he was also it. saying something like people were impatient. Like he he used the word impatient, I think, sometimes. <laughs> because, yeah, he was like, yeah, yeah like like people were just impatient. And we, we had only delayed salaries, not cancelled them. Yeah, because, buddy, if you like tell people that you cancelled their salaries, that's like breach of contract. Like well, even I mean, delaying you that they cancel your, but yeah. if you cancel their salaries, they're going to walk out en masse and file suit against you for yeah. you know, fraud. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, then, I mean, I don't know. Like, I can't sympathize with that. And ultimately, like, the guy is like basically like saying that yeah, we are not chasing the latest fad, like free to play games as a service, like blah blah blah. If this was happening five years ago, he would be like, oh yeah, we are all doing episodic crisis now. So and like, <laughs> well, I mean, they they did yeah. spend a long time trying to make Crisis the next big uh, shooter. Uh, like mm-hmm. that game got three. That game got a friggin' trilogy, man. Uh, yeah no but yeah, what, yeah but but the, but each of the consecutive crisis games like d- went away from the thing that what like made crisis yeah. one po- popular like open world and like forests and all of that stuff instead yeah. it was like they each time it was like linear and like all of that stuff and the third time like i don't know what crisis 3 tagline was like it was literally like a bow i guess bow and arrow bow and arrow it stuff. was the year yeah. of the bow when crisis 3 showed up so they had a bow and arrow yeah uh, yeah, I yeah. don't know, yeah. Like, I mean, if you're, uh, if, like, that's not really a technological innovation, like, going from guns to bows and arrows. But I don't know, yeah, maybe that's just, like... Yeah, I, like, I don't know, I don't know either. I think that, uh, I think that they made a mistake uh, with the direction that franchise took. I think that he's making a mistake and being short-sighted, jumping into free-to-play now, because I mm-hmm. think he's late to that particular party. I think he's really, really late. If he wanted to get in on the mobile crowd... That market is already cornered by people yeah. who, like, I mean, Tejas plays League of Legends. It is very unlikely that he will even switch to Dota 2 anytime soon. Uh, yeah. Like, League of Legends is his MOBA. I, I don't, like, yeah. I mean, he might try other MOBAs, but League of, like, for the most part, Tejas, League of Legends is your MOBA, yeah. right? And I mean, it's yeah. not like Crisis can make a new one and, like, all of the other competitors can disappear. Like, the other competitors have, like, smaller, but at least, like, some player pools compared to that. Uh... And they're trying to upstage, uh, like, I think, set players in a lot of markets at the same time. They're trying to up- upset, uh, upstage set players in the in the free-to-play. Yeah. Uh, and they've also sold, uh, yeah, like, I was just actually reading this, and this was, like, pretty funny. Like, uh, like they also uh, let go their US studio or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, like, five years ago, like, the Kevat Yearly gave an interview. He was like, this was the fastest studio setup ever about the, the Vigil thing. 
<laughs> and now like the vigil guy has given an interview saying that i decided to leave on a whim he was like one day i was like yeah i don't want to work on this and then i took all of my team and left and i made my own studio so that was funny yeah because because yeah like like i can't get like how they are making this like spur of the moment type decisions 5 years late to every bandwagon yeah I mean, like, like, like when they bought Homefront, they were officially like too late on the first-person military bandwagon, which had already like at that I, point I it had already like. I understand that acquisition. They paid a considerable amount of money to acquire Homefront, and they've ended up not even shipping that game. Like, I think they took yeah. it to some percentage, and now they've sold it off to someone else, yeah. possibly at a profit. And the weirdest thing about that inter- interview well, there's is definitely that- not a profit because like they got it at a like substantial price. They paid like. 2 million just for the ip or something and Jesus. then they paid for an entire studio and like all of the time they spent to run at, least, at a studio so at I least know. a couple of years development right on that time yeah yeah so uh, yeah, yeah. I, i can't i don't think it's been a profit it's been more of a case of them just like letting all their liabilities go which has like and uh, i mean now he's saying that like they've got a huge cash injection from a revenue share deal with someone whom they he cannot disclose uh and that is what is paying the bills uh and that just sounds really really shady but i like i mean i'm sure there'll be an announcement soon where he announces who he's going to revenue share deal with the deal is with and who has decided to bail them out uh arvin's guess when we spoke about this yesterday was some <laughs> <laughs> some arab sheikh with a lot of play around money i guess Yeah, uh, yeah because like the the weird thing i find is that i don't know like is crytek like privately funded because if this was public then you would know right like public corporations just like kind of have to announce this sort of stuff but i don't well, know. Like, yeah. even if he has to announce there will be a delay before he has to announce right i mean like he will mm-hmm. he will be able to make the announcement at a certain point in time and i'm sure he has to make an announcement even here even if he is a private company he has like if there's mm-hmm. money coming into his company he has to declare who who that money or where that money yeah, is coming yeah i guess like yeah he can delay until like the, the funding thing i guess the the in inve- the person who has given the money has to give the go ahead to say oh, all right you can disclose who we are yeah. like on a serious note uh, like what the arab shape thing is a joke like i would not yeah, be personally surprised. yeah like personally i don't really care for like the crytek games or anything so i'm fine like i don't even care for cry engine because i think there's like two clear better competitors than them already because yeah, i've seen at, like uh, no but anyway yeah So anyway, yeah, like I do. I think that's ultimately Crytek's problem. Every field they're trying to compete in, there's at least two better people, like better not people, more like better products than. Well, them. two better people who have a, a a really really good hold on their market. Yeah. Uh. So. so yeah, and I don't. I don't really like cared for. Like I I played Crisis a bit. Didn't get to the end. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, like I I I don't like how they like handle this. uh like the the interview i don't like how they handled the employees and then uh, yeah i don't like the games anyways like, i mean he yeah. kind of shat on some of them yeah uh, pretty much yeah yeah uh well bully for sevart really i guess yeah. uh super rich guy in a very very <laughs> financially comp- like i think the financial planning thing comes from someone who has like, not who has had like less than a couple of million dollars for a, for a long time yeah pretty know? much yeah <laughs> and and If you're in that position, it will be hard for you to realize how people cannot financially plan. Mm-hmm. If you're making four yeah. million dollars a year, you don't need to financially plan because you're never going to be in a hand-to-mouth type situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, most people don't make that kind of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty much it then. Yeah. Boo, uh, <laughs> that that was uh, our comeback cast. Uh, hope we'll have one next week. Uh, hopefully, Rashi will be able to join us then. and uh good like again arvin good job uh, on unrest yeah thank you hope that the <laughs> hope that the next thing does really well uh tejas has had to go because he needs to eat uh all right and that that is the dead horse podcast for this week guys i'm the lake uh, signing out and with me is arvin bye see you guys <laughs>